Hello, my name is Alison Duddle and I am the director of A Bird in the Hand Theatre. I'm really glad to be part of Beverly's first digital puppet festival. Hooray! <laughs> if this had been a normal light festival, we would have performed our show called Midnight. It's a story about time, about dreams, and about a very special magical cat called Midnight. Normally, I make puppet shows, but at the moment, I decided I'm going to learn how to make animations. Animations are a lot like puppet shows, except instead of performing in front of a live audience, you record it one single picture at a time and then run all of those pictures together and hopefully, just like a puppet show, it tells a story with pictures. Stop motion animation is the process of creating the magical illusion of life and movement in an inanimate object by seamlessly running together a series of photographs of that object in fast succession. Each photograph depicting a tiny part of the sequence. You can make an animation out of just about anything. The simplest materials can be the most effective. A film animation runs together 24 pictures to make one second of film. But our brains can actually only compute 10 or 12 individual pictures each second. Anything more is seen as movement. It used to be necessary to have a film camera and a fancy editing program to make animations. But now there are many free apps available for smartphones able to shoot and make simple edits using the phone camera. For this animation, I'm going to use iMotion. To make this film, Back to Nature, I'm going to use two contrasting sets of materials. For the city, I will use newspaper, a pen, scissors, in contrast for the natural world, I'll use lots of different colours and shapes of leaves, sticks, feathers, moss and some other things that I found on a little walk and a small lump of clay. But if you don't have clay, you could use plasticine, play-doh or blue tack. You'll need a few things to set up your space. Two chairs and a flat piece of wood stretched between the chairs. This will make a rostra. That's a place to hold the camera that faces downwards. It's nice to work on a table, but the floor would be fine too. You'll need a phone and an animation app. When you open the app and start a new movie, you'll need to select the back camera so you can see the screen as you're working and make a choice between manual and time lapse. In this film, I've used both. Every time you take a break from filming to look at your work, you need to go back and select the right setting. Time-lapse is great for recording a slow process and speeding it up, but in animation it can also be used to bring yourself into the animation and let the camera take photos at regular intervals. You can set how often it takes pictures on the slider. To begin with, we'll use the manual setting. 
With your phone up on the board, you can see the space that you'll have to animate in the screen. To build the city in our film, we will bring in the newspaper shapes, one tiny movement at a time, taking a picture in between each little movement. Make sure you remember which direction you're moving in. The cars and the lorries can be animated over the top of the buildings. Have fun with the movement. Things don't have to behave like real life. If you make a mistake, like taking a picture while your hand is still in the frame, press back to go to the review screen and then play through your clip to see where the mistake is. You can pause it by re-pressing play, move forward or back with the arrows and when you find the mistake press the delete button on the right. You need to confirm delete by pressing the screen. Then before you carry on it's really important to skip to the end of the clip otherwise the new part will appear in the wrong place. To carry on, press the camera button in the top left and remember to choose between manual or time-lapse settings again. There isn't a zoom setting on iMotion, but you can still do it in a simple way by picking up your phone and taking a series of pictures, getting closer and closer to the detail you want to focus on. And then, before the next shot, you can set up a new scene. To make the birds, I played with lots and lots of different colours and shapes of leaves. First to make a head, a body, a tail, wings and feathers. The stem makes a good beak. When you animate them, it's a bit fiddly to keep all of the pieces together. But make sure that the bird's beak is pointing in the direction of travel. And remember, when you're animating, whether the wings are on the way forwards or on the way back. On the Tools button, you can add sound to your film. You can add music from your phone with iTunes library. I've added music to mine by my friend Chris Davis. And I also found some great sound effects on a website called Free Sounds. I found some bird song and car noises. You can also record sound effects on the microphone button. Animators call these Foley effects and they make the action feel more real. Before you finish the film, you might want to add a title and credits. Credits usually go at the end and they say who made the film. You can always take the cursor right back to the beginning of the sequence and add in a title afterwards. Finally, here is the complete film.